Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us at the Youth Leadership Institute's Vaping and Marijuana presentation. I'm Rod Spikes with the Youth Leadership Institute, and I'm here with Smitha Gundavijala, also with the Youth Leadership Institute. Yes, and today we've partnered with Semitel County Health All Together Better to put together this presentation on vaping and marijuana for you. Today's presentation will cover the topics from a public health and youth centered lens. That means that this will be educational evidence-based and focused on young people. This will not be supporting legislation, able to answer all questions or discouraging medical marijuana use, as in we are not medical marijuana experts. Today's issues on vaping, we're gonna talk about the basics. What is vaping? What do these products look like? Then we'll get into health impacts, followed by what about cannabis and vaping? And then we'll final, Finish it with what can we do? Pass it to you, Smitha. Thank you, Rod. Yes, I'm just gonna get us started by talking about the basics, um, talking a little bit about nicotine. So as you know, um, both e-cigarettes and cigarettes contain nicotine, but e-cigarettes are also designed to deliver other flavorings and additives via an inhaled aerosol. So the same stuff that's in hairspray. And we know that you can also use vapes to, to consume cannabis or weed. Since 2014, vapes or e-cigarettes have been the most commonly used tobacco product among young people in this country. And most e-cigarettes, like we said, do contain nicotine, which is the addictive drug in regular cigarettes, cigars, and other tobacco products. So what do these products look like? Well, this is a very classic example, the Juul. It looks like a flash drive or a tech device. It's designed to be sleek and easy to conceal. And this exact appeal, the sleekness and the discreetness of Juul has made it really, really easy for young people to hop on board with that. So we saw a 600% surge in sales for Juul between 2016 and 2017. And we know it's only gone up since then. We also have PAX, which is a vape that's designed to use with cannabis. And as you can see, it connects to your phone and lets you play games. So they're really trying hard to have these products come in different colors and appeal to young people. And then you can kind of see from the spread of products for Soren that they're also designed to resemble household objects, right? Like you can see the ones on the left look kind of like markers or highlighters. The ones in the middle look like little flavoring droplets that go into water. And on the right, the vapes that you see there kind of look like the cases that students use to hold lead for their mechanical pencils. So they're designed to be easy to conceal in disguise and hard for adults to identify and intervene. And this is important because one in 20 middle school students and one in five high school students is currently using e-cigarettes. Right, so e-cigarette use among both middle and high school students has increased over 900% just from 2011 to 2015. And like we said, that's gone up since then. So what exactly is in e-cigarettes? Well, we know a regular pack of cigarettes has about 20 milligrams of inhaled nicotine, right? That's one milligram per cigarette. But then when you try to dose it in a vape pod, it gets tricky. In a single jewel pod, you could have 41 cigarettes worth of nicotine. That's two packs of nicotine in a single pod. Then you go to other brands like Fix and Soren, and that goes up even more. So for a Fix pod, it might contain up to 75 cigarettes worth of nicotine in a pod, which is almost four packs. And then a Soren could have 90 cigarettes worth of nicotine. So that's a lot, and it makes it really tricky to dose. Nicotine isn't all that's in these pods, right? You've got different flavors, and those flavors can make it really, really appealing um, for young people to hop on board and use vapes, right? Normally, cigarettes can taste nasty, but having cucumber, creme, menthol, fruit, watermelon, vanilla, mango, peach, strawberries, and cream is an innovation that was designed to really make it easier for young people to start using nicotine and start vaping. But we know that what's in these flavorings isn't always healthy, right? Because you're not just vaping flavors, there are chemicals that go into those flavors. 
Cinnamon flavors might contain cinnamaldehyde. Those cherry flavors in vapes usually contain the chemical benzaldehyde. So you can kind of see that these flavors are actually just coming from chemicals. And there are lots of chemicals in e-cigarettes or vapes, right? This is just kind of a list that shows some of the chemicals that you might find in a single vape pod. It includes things like acetone, formaldehyde, benzene, which is poisonous, and then heavy metals like lead and nickel and arsenic that aren't supposed to go in your lungs. So some places where you might have heard of these chemicals or might recognize them from, um, you might recognize, uh, recognize acetone from nail polish remover. Uh, formaldehyde is used to actually preserve dead bodies. Uh, propylene glycol is used in antifreeze that you might pour in your car. And rubidium is used in fireworks. So those are some of the chemicals that you're inhaling, right? And it has consequences. So diacetyl is a chemical found in a lot of these different flavoring agents. And that chemical helps produce the flavors that make vapes so appealing, but it can also cause this thing called popcorn lung, which is basically just the scarring of the air sacs in your lungs, making it harder to take in air and to breathe. And when you look at a diagram of popcorn lung and what it does to you, you can kind of see the, the difference between a healthy lung and a smoker's lung or vapor's lung. Because what popcorn lung does is by scarring the air sacs, they can't either take in air from the outside environment or exchange air between your you know, alveoli or your air sacs in your blood. So you're actually not getting as much oxygen into your blood because your lungs are scarred from vaping. And this can have real consequences. So we've talked a little bit about the basics of nicotine and vaping, but as you know, you can also vape cannabis. So I'm gonna pass it back to Ra to talk a little bit about cannabis. Thank you, Smitha. That was really good information. So now we're going to get into the basics of cannabis. First and foremost, you must be 21 in order to purchase recreational cannabis, and you must be 18 in order for medical cannabis use. If you see to the pictures to the left, cannabis, marijuana, is a mixture of green, brown, gray leaves, scientifically known as cannabis sativa, also known as pot, herb, weed, kush, or the most popular, marijuana. Now we're gonna break it down. THC versus CBD. Cannabis contains tetrahydrocannabinol, which is THC, which is a chemical that changes different parts of the mind and mood. Cannabidol, CBD, is another chemical in cannabis that does not affect your mood, and it compensates for the effect THC causes like anxiety and paranoia. Now we're gonna get into the different types of cannabis. There's food or liquid, the potency is measured in milligrams of CBD or THC, often marketed towards young people. If you look to the diagram, picture to the right, you see Chiba Chews, which are like gummies. You see the 420 bar, which is chocolate and other edibles or foods that young people can eat or that would be most likely to want to eat. Then we have other types of cannabis like pill, patch, or tincture, um, usually little liquid drops, usually for medical use, high in CBD potency with little to no THC. We move on to other types of cannabis. We have dab, butter, shatter, or wax oil. These are more high potency, includes 50 to 90% of concentrated THC. We also know that high THC level has been led to increased emergency room visits. <clears throat> on average, THC and CBD use are in US and between 1960 and 2011. We know that today's cannabis is four to six times more potent than what it was 20 years ago, depending on the product. In the diagram to the right, you see that the line at the bottom, that's CBD. From 1984 to 2008, the CBD has been pretty much the same in potency. But with THC, we see that the trend from 1960, so forth, has been increased in potent. So we can only can imagine that this trend has been increasing and been the same today. Now we're gonna go into cannabis use in pregnancy. Studies found that maternal cannabis use is linked to lower birth weight. It also doubles risk of youth initiating cigarette smoking and daily cigarette smoking, but it can also increase risk of youth initiating cannabis use. These are all suggestive and not definitive links. Again, we are not medical experts. 
Can marijuana use during pregnancy harm a baby? Big question. In the U.S., 4% of women pregnant 4% of pregnant women, sorry, report using cannabis in the last month. During pregnancy, up, up to 30% of THC, marijuana's active ingredient, can be found or can reach the baby. Driving under the influence of cannabis can be lethal. DUI doesn't just mean booze. We know that cannabis affects reaction and judgment. After alcohol, cannabis is a drug connected to car collisions, including those involving death. Half of the teen and young adult drivers who die in car crashes are under the influence of either cannabis, alcohol, or both. Cannabis is addictive. In 2014, 4.2 million people, 12 and older, had a cannabis abuse or addiction problem. 30% of people that use cannabis can become addicted to the drug. People that started using before 18 years old are four to seven times more likely to develop an addiction to the drug than starting as an adult of 25. Cannabis and mental health. THC can intensify psychotic symptoms and worsen outcomes in patients already diagnosed with schizophrenia or other mental health diagnoses. Several studies strongly suggest that using cannabis in early teenage years can increase risk of developing psychosis while regular use of cannabis has also been linked to depression, anxiety, and a lack of drive or motivation. Going into some statistics, 93% of seventh graders have never smoked marijuana. 81% of ninth graders have never smoked marijuana. 63% of 11th graders have never smoked marijuana. The thing about this is you can see that with age, comes more exposure, especially in the high school years. So we can see that from seventh grade to 11th grade, the number of youth who never smoked marijuana fortunately dropped. <clears throat> then we go on to 86% um, of seventh graders have never used a vape for marijuana. 77% of ninth graders have also never used vape for marijuana. And then 63% of 11th graders have never used a vape for marijuana. Same as the last slide, you can kind of see that with age comes more exposure, especially in high school years. So from seventh to 11th grade, the numbers of never used of vape for marijuana has also dropped. Here's what you can do. You can talk to your local city council. You can educate yourself and others on the potential harms. Follow at cannabis underscore decoded or you can check out cannabisdecoded.org for more information. And you can check out the full Vox video at the link right there. Here's a couple of resources for, uh, for substance use treatment resources in Semitel County. We have Semitel County Behavioral Health, and we also have Adolescent Counseling Services. Thank you for joining us in this wonderful presentation. That concludes what we have for you today. You, any questions, concerns, comments, please contact us or check us out at yli.org slash region slash stand hyphen Mateo slash. This is YLI, I'm Rob Spikes. I'm Smitha, thank you. And thank you, and again, we partner with Cemetery County Health Behavioral, and that's our presentation.